Hello, my friends. I'm Rich Larson, and I'm the IRC Tire Guy. Today, we're going to get right into it with a new slow wheelie hack. This technique is not only great for learning your slow wheelies, which everybody wants to learn, but it's also extremely useful in those hard enduro situations. You may be saying, why would a slow wheelie be useful in hard enduro? There's a lot of reasons to learn a slow wheelie other than the fact it's going to be extremely impressive to your buddies. I'm sure you've heard me mention this before, but slow wheelies is what separates the technical rider. I hate to say it, but anybody can pull a second and third gear fast wheelie in a very short amount of time and practice. They really don't require an ability to find the actual balance point. They don't really require much clutch control because you're really just using the power of the machine to fight gravity. With a slow wheelie, you have to understand that friction point of your clutch. This is a great step in becoming a tactician with your clutch and throttle control. The slow wheelie helps you understand the finer points of your machine's power delivery. It also helps you understand the ability to balance on different axes, of course, up and down as well as left to right. Being comfortable with that balance point, that area where you almost feel like you're floating, where you feel like you could fall back at any moment. Being comfortable there is largely where we relate this new slow wheelie hack drill to improving your hard enduro technique. We'll explain that as we explain how we approach this hack. The first step in a slow wheelie is understanding how to get the machine up quickly into that balance point. This requires a quick slip of the clutch with the addition of a loaded engine. Commonly what we see happen is a struggle in getting the machine up quickly enough to find the balance point before you run out of gearing. Basically, you're at the top of your RPMs in first gear, and this is the point where you would need to shift to second. Now it's not a slow wheelie anymore. This is where we find the first step of this new wheelie hack, and it's probably going to be the most challenging part. It requires an understanding of how to put a quick burst of power to the ground and a lot of commitment. From a stationary position, we want the front tire of your machine to come up quickly and the entire bike to come out from under you. So you're actually off the seat and standing behind your machine. Now, I know what you're saying. What about the rear brake? Isn't it a bad habit to throw your legs off the back instead of using your rear brake to correct the machine back down? Well, it is and it isn't. We're gonna cover the rear brake eventually, and in practicing this hack, your rear brake skill will come naturally. But being in the position of being off the back of the bike is more important than you may realize. You'd be surprised how much time I spend exactly in this position. In hard enduro, especially in those vertical situations, this technique is largely required. Watch any mountainous hard enduro and you'll see this position over and over from the top riders. Being comfortable off the back of the machine in the balance point is a technique I'm constantly using to turn the bike around and rearrange to set up and continue through an extremely steep section. This hack isn't only learning the slow wheelie, it's now getting you comfortable with that balance point for the steepest, scariest situations. And that's the last place you want to be uncomfortable. Now let's break down how to get that machine up quickly. I highly recommend using both front and rear brakes to assist with your suspension compression and rebound. With my left foot planted and my right foot on the rear brake, I'm holding both brakes and driving my body and hips forward to compress my front suspension. As my hips are driving forward with my clutch in, I'm holding a steady throttle. It doesn't require much power to get that machine up. The goal is as little throttle as possible. We're looking for that pure traction to the rear tire when we release that clutch to get the front end up. Because I've driven my hips and weight forward to compress my front suspension, we're looking to time that quick release of the clutch simultaneously with the rebound of my suspension in addition to the snap of my hips and body weight back towards the rear tire. There's a lot happening all at once. This is about efficiency everything working together to save you energy.
Now, because the snap of the clutch is so fast, and if properly done, we're getting that efficient traction. The machine should be coming up quickly. Right before we're getting at that balance point, we take our foot off the right side peg and stand firmly behind the bike. This is why we want to use as little throttle as possible. When the machine hits the balance point, we can pull in the clutch and stay relaxed in that straight up and down position. If you're adding too much throttle, this will cause the bike to overshoot that balance point. Then you'll be fighting a wheelie over. A great way to practice when first learning is on a slight uphill grade. This will tame the machine with gravity pushing back on the rear tire. The tamer and more flat the grade gets, the more challenging this practice is. Once you feel comfortable with getting the bike to the balance point, practice walking behind the machine up the hill. We're using a very steady throttle as well as a gentle slip of the clutch to that friction point. If the bike is lunging forward while you walk behind it, your arms are tired or it seems you're fighting the bike altogether, this is a sign you need to work on your clutch control. This also is great practice for your clutch control, and it's very similar to what I'm doing during a slow wheelie. Now, as you've progressed with getting the machine straight up and down, as well as walking the bike forward, let's add the next step. After your bike is in the balance point, try and keep it there. Step forward with your left foot and add your right foot to the peg and the rear brake without moving. This is a very challenging part. Staying stationary is important for your ability to adjust your position in that balance point. Notice as I add my foot to the rear brake side, I'm almost hanging off the handlebars. I'm mixing my body weight with throttle, clutch, and gravity together to hold this position. At this point, we add moving to a completely seated position, then slowly slipping the clutch and moving the machine forward. This is where we start to focus on the rear brake. I'm almost dragging the brake with a steady throttle and that same clutch slip as we use when we're walking behind the bike. I'm focused on staying in that balance point. You can use your left foot to assist your balance as well. Of course, when dragging your left foot, you'll be doing a circle wheelie. As you become more comfortable with your left foot dragging, learn how to bring it off the ground then onto the peg. Then your wheelies will become straighter and straighter until eventually you don't have to start in that stationary position with your left foot off the peg. You can start at a slow controlled pace with both feet on the pegs using that same clutch snap to get the bike straight up into the air and to that balance point. These are great steps to become comfortable with your balance point as well as your slow wheelies. Quickly, if you're a shorter rider, this is still possible. If you can't touch the ground at all, you can actually stand next to your bike and still achieve the same results. As a great example, Spencer Wilton, a fellow IRC athlete, is 5 foot 9 and 135 pounds. He's probably one of the shortest riders on the American Hard Enduro circuit, and this is him doing the exact technique. Spencer can top 10 in Enduro Cross and Hard Enduro, and I won't lie to you, he can smoke me and I'm nearly 6 foot 2. Put in the time and hammer down. That's what matters. I hope these breakdowns are helping you guys improve your hard enduro and trail skills. I hope you're enjoying the channel, and if you are, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at IRCMoto and my personal Instagram page at RichLarson511. And until next time, keep shredding.